وصحبه اجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما بك ومعرفة يا رب العالمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا 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 السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today, insha'Allah, we will start with one difficult part for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions. We said that part of the Muslims they already went to Al Habasha. And we said that later, after it becomes even stronger, I mean later after the suffering, become, the torturing becomes even harder and more. So there was also another immigrant to al Habasha, the second one. And when al mushrikeen when the disbelievers, they found that Al-Najashi was, was helping, and he was supporting Muslims, so they were even more and more angry. And they were doing their best to, to attack whenever there is anyone become Muslim, they were doing their best to attack him or to let them leave Islam. But still, they couldn't touch the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he had special, special gift from Allah Taala. Anyone look at the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he respect him. When Allah Taala wants to give you this respect, then who can take it from you? You know, Anas ibn Malik of the law, Anas ibn Malik was one of the, uh, let us say, the servants of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anas ibn Malik, he was one of the servants of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, this was in Medina later. Anas ibn Malik, he said, once he said, he said, I was serving the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for 10 years. Anas ibn Malik, he said, in 10 years, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he never say oh to me in all of his life. Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu alayhi he said, the Prophet Muhammad never told me for something I did what you did, or for something I didn't do why you didn't do. It means that the Prophet Muhammad was always okay with the situation. He never used his hand to beat someone except in the jihad, in the war, he said he did that. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was, you know, one of the things Anas ibn Malik said that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was azhar al law. His, his face was like being colored. It was not very white and not dark. It was always, you know, when you look at someone, that he has a big color face. You know, you feel that it has light. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu when he walked, he walked all of it, all of him. You know, he doesn't walk like some people today. Or, you know, he walks all. You feel the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu they used to say that when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu walked, Tariq al he walked as if he is riding something, you know, so fast. You feel that the land is moving under his feet. So when he walks, 
صلى الله عليه وسلم he walks on. And when he look at someone, he turns on. He doesn't do this. He turn on. When he point on someone, he doesn't use this finger. He use the four fingers to point on someone. And the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم when he used to hear something. Surprise him. He used to make his hand upside down. He used to do this. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, people, I mean, and Muslimin, they couldn't touch him. They couldn't do anything wrong to him because of this uh, character and this uh, this thing that Allah Taala wa Taala this gift. That Allah Taala wa Taala has given the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that they couldn't touch him or hurt him. And by the way, also Anas he said, he said, "Ma la mastu hariran wa la dibajan aliyana min tafti Rasulullah." He said, "The softest thing I touch." Is the hand of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the most nice perfume I smell is not the perfume that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam put. Is the smell of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And he said, "The most nice perfume I smell is not the perfume that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam put. Is the smell of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam." You know, once one person he sold. Some camels to Abu Jahl. And all of us, we know who is Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl didn't pay the money. That person, he came back to take his money from Abu Jahl. And Abu Jahl didn't want to give him the money. So that person, he was asking, "Is there anyone who can help me to get the money from Abu Jahl?" So they were making fun of that person, and they want to put the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم in trouble. So they said, "Go to Muhammad." Then those people, that is, one side is to mock this person, the other side is to find trouble. They want to find the Prophet Muhammad. And of course, the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. He was the prophet, and Abu Jahl was his biggest enemy. So that person, he went to the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "They told me that you can bring my money from Abu Jahl." He said, "They told me that you can bring my money from Abu Jahl." So the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Yes, come." The prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to Abu Jahl. He knocked the door. Abu Jahl opened the door. He saw Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in front of him. The prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam looked at Abu Jahl. He said, "Do you have to pay money to this man?" Then Abu Jahl he said, "Yes." Then the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Pay it to him." Then Abu Jahl get in the house, took the money, went back, gave the money to that person. Abu Jahl 就进去里面，然后把钱拿出来就付给那个人。The people they saw this. 那大家都看到了。They asked Abu Jahl, "What is your problem? You always say that you will do this and this and that to Muhammad. Then what happened? What is your problem?" 人家问那个问那个叫他说，你有什么问题啊？你有什么毛病？你不是每次都说你要把千金万贯的杀掉吗？那你现在怎么又变这样子？ So Abu Jahl, he said, "I don't know. I saw death between my eyes. I don't know what happened. I was so scared, and I just get inside and take the money." He said, "I don't know what happened. I saw death between my eyes. I don't know what happened. I was so scared, and I just get inside and take the money." He said, "I don't know what happened. I saw death between my eyes. I don't know what happened. I was so scared, and I just get inside and take the money." He said, "I don't know what happened. I saw death between my eyes. I don't know what happened. I was so scared, and I just get inside and take the money." He said, "I don't know what happened. I saw death between my eyes. I don't know what happened. I was so scared, and I just get inside and take the money." He said, "I don't know what happened. I saw death between my eyes. I don't know what happened. I was so scared, and I just get inside and take the money." He said, "I don't know what happened. I saw death between my eyes. I don't know what happened. I was so scared, and I just get inside and take the money." He said, "I don't know what happened. I saw death between my eyes. I don't know what happened. I was so scared, and I just get inside and take the money." He said, Now, so Al-Mushrikeen, they decided, the disbelievers, they decided 
they found that the best way is just to kill Muhammad. For the law. And they were thinking, they were thinking of of killing, killing him. Then Abu Talib, Abu Talib, the uncle of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is the one who is protecting him. When he heard this, he took the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his tribe and so on to one place which is a little bit away from Mecca. It is still in Mecca, but not in the let us say not in the downtown. <laughs> so their tribe, all of them they went with them, and Beni Hashem also another tribe they went with them. So all the tribe or the two tribes they were together. And then that time, the disbelievers they decided to sign an agreement against Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and all what is with him. So all of them, they wrote an agreement, and they said that they will put this agreement inside Kaaba, so they will consider it as. A religious agreement. So, and the one who who uh, volunteered to wrote to write this agreement, his name was Boi. And even his name was was bad. That was the person who wrote the agreement. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua against him, and that person he was unable after he wrote that that agreement, he was unable to move his hand until he died. So what was the agreement in general? The agreement was saying. That no one get married to any one of those people, and they don't accept that no one, I mean, male or female, get married to them. No one sell them anything. No one buy from them anything. And of course, they couldn't allow anyone to get in or anyone to go out. This remained for a long time. And of course, there were a lot of people from Al Mushrikeen. Also, they disagree this this part. But still, Abu Jahal and those others, they still insist, and they were supported totally by Shaytan, so they could do it, and they could force others to accept it. And of course, meanwhile, because it was not a few weeks, it was like three years. So, so also, meanwhile, you know, during Hajj, the Hajj, which is the Hajj before Islam, that which is the market, what we said, that people they used to come to Mecca for also buying and selling, and you know, come for Kaaba and so on. So during that time, also those people who used to come, they used to see what is happening with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the people who were with him. And whenever anyone tried to sell them something or buy from them something or whatever, then Abu Lahab used to come and say, "How much you want? I will pay double, but just don't deal with them." See. You find sometimes that there are some people they are using their money. 
the money that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has given them, the power that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has given them, you find some people they use it against Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. But still, when you are with Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, you are the winner at the end. No matter how many are those who are against the truth, they are weak. And even if you are one, if you are telling the truth, if you are supporting the religion of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, then you are so many, you are not one. No. This this uh, siege it remained the first year and the second year and part of the third year. Meanwhile, some they still try to get in to send some. But still, whenever, whenever al mushrikeen they catch them, then they take what they are trying to send and they they fight and even sometimes they even beat them. Like, like for example, one of al mushrikeen one of the disbelievers, he used to send at night. He used to send the camel with a lot of things and just, you know, let the camel just go to reach to that area where they are in. And of course, you know, that camel has a lot of food and things and so on. Until finally, Abu Jahl, he catch him. So he told he he catch him and he start to to shout him. So he told him that those are some those are few things they belong to Khadija, Khadija, Khadija the the wife of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and I'm sending it to her. And, and still Abu Jahal he still insists not to let it go. And then another one from a mushrikeen also, from the disbelievers, another one came and then start to shout Abu Jahal and start to say that you have to let it go and you shouldn't stop it, it, it belongs to her and so on. So you can see that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, when He wants to, to support you, he even sometimes use your enemy to support you. Now, you know, we said that those, that other Arabs, they used to come to Mecca. They used to come for buying, selling, and hajj, and so on. So when they used to see what is happening, so they used to start to ask more. So they, they start to ask more, so they start to know more. So they realize that Muhammad is not what you are saying, that he is only someone who is dealing with magic or he is only someone who is dealing with gene or whatever. No, he, he is making troubles to you. So this means that he is really saying something big. So actually, this was also kind of advertising. So more and more Arabs in different areas, they start to know more about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In another hand, remember the Muslims who are in Habasha, they were also spreading Islam. They were also talking about Islam, introducing Islam to the people in Habasha. So, also a group of people from Habasha.
Khat, they heard a lot about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu They heard a lot about Islam. So they were so interested in meeting the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those group, they were from 25 to 30 people. And they went to Mecca to meet the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they get inside that siege, they get inside to check and to sit and talk to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they get inside, they talk to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all of them inside they became Muslims. And they went out, so Abu Jahl, he saw them and he knew that they became Muslim. Then he said, you are idiots. You get inside to check what is going on, then you went out as Muslim, you are stupid, and then he started to say bad words about them. So they said, we don't want to talk to you, salam, and they left. So, although they were suffering, Muslims there, they were suffering, and they didn't have enough food, they didn't have enough uh, anything that they, I mean, enough things for the daily life, but although it was like this, but their iman, their belief was increasing day by day. Why? Because they were sure that Allah Taala is with them. Now this is the point. We go to some other prophets also, like the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was alone. The Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was alone talking to all of those people. All of them, they were against him, including his father. But was he feeling lonely? Was he feel, did he give up? He kept on trying and trying until finally Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala ordered him to go to another place. So when you are with Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, never think that you are weak. When you are doing the things for the sake of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, never think that you are weak. See, those Muslims, all the people surrounding them, they were against them, but they never gave up. It is not only they never gave up, even they believe it was increasing day by day. So, and also there is another thing. In the suffering, in the obstacles, in the uh, in those hard times, you will know who are you, and people will know who are you. So those who believe in Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, or those who who follow follow Islam for their personal things, once they find that there is something in Islam which is not which is not going well with my personal thing, then they leave. And those who are real Muslims, who are really following the rules of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, for the sake of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, then they know that nothing is for free when you are dealing with Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. We always say this, when you want to improve your ability in anything, then you need to practice and you need to work harder. 
就是说，如果说你想要去呃增强自己的一些某部分一些能力的话，你必须要更加的努力。If I want to have big muscles and I want to become strong person, then will it work? If I don't really work on it, will it work? If I don't start to practice, start to go to the gym, start to find some coach, some teachers to teach me. And then it is the same. At the beginning, when I start, I start with only like maybe two, three kilos. Try to practice step by step. After a few weeks. Maybe five kilo, step by step, ten kilo. Then maybe at the end there will be maybe fifty kilo, fifty kilo. But if I remain two kilo, does it mean that I am improving? That if I start, that I start to practice, maybe two kilo, two kilo, and then maybe five kilo, five 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 kilo. So when I want my belief to be increased, then this means that I need to practice, and I need to prove to myself that my belief is increasing. That if I want my belief to be increased, then this means that I need to practice, and I need to prove to myself that my belief is increasing. That if I want my belief to be increased, then this means that I need to practice, and I need to prove to myself that my belief is increasing. That if I want my belief to be increased, then this means that I need to practice, and I need to prove to myself that my belief is increasing. That if I want my belief to be increased, then this means that I need to practice, and I need to Has everything. He has nice house, nice car. Everything is fine, and his life is very stable. And then he said, "Alhamdulillah, I am suffering for the sake of Allah, and I accept this suffering." That person, he, 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 he
let everybody support the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But he didn't. Why Allah Tabaraka wa Taala didn't do so? This is the point. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Messenger of Allah Tabaraka wa Taala, the one that Allah Tabaraka wa Taala is totally supporting him. The one that Allah Tabaraka wa Taala said, "Inna tabi ayunina," you are in our eyes, means we are protecting you. Allah said, "So, so you say, in my eyes, that means I am protecting you." But still, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he suffered a lot. But this Prophet Muhammad, he also suffered a lot. Imagine during that days, the kids, the young people, they used to beat their parents. Imagine during that days, the kids, they used to cry because they are hungry. They want to eat. And imagine all those people around them; they were unable to offer them something. Imagine some of them; they even this is written in the Sira. Imagine some of them; they even used to bring the uh, the leather of of the animal, the leather. And try just to keep on beating it, beating it until it become a little bit softer, and then eat it with some water. Those are who? Those are Muslims. Those are the companions of the Prophet Muhammad. And the Prophet Muhammad is with them. And still, still, they accept. Still, they didn't say. They didn't say, "You are the prophet. How come this is happening to us?" They didn't say, "You ask Allah to help us." They just accept, and they know that the end will be in their side. Then. Two things happen. You know, we said that part of the disbelievers, part of Al Mushrikeen, they disagree what is happening. But they were afraid. They didn't know how to stop it. Until finally, Allah Taala wa Taala He arranged. Five of those disbelievers to stand up and say something. And here there is something also we should learn. Although it is from disbelievers, but we should learn also. You know, the first one, his name was Hisham ibn Abu. He was the first one. He wanted to stand up. And he wanted to say that we shouldn't do this. But then he was thinking, I am one only. But I will not be able to stand up alone and talk. So he went to another one. His name was Zuhair ibn Umayyah. He went to another disbeliever. So he told him. That we should stop this. How come you accept that your people, your relatives, and those they are in front of us, and they are hungry, they are thirsty, they are hungry, they are thirsty, and we still, we still cannot help them. Okay, again. So. Hisham ibn Amr he was talking to 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 Zuhair ibn Umayyah. He was telling him that how come, how come you still accept that this is happening? They are our relatives, they are our people, and they are hungry and thirsty, and we cannot help them. That first one to find the second one. He said, they are saying, 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 Zuhair, he said, "No, I don't accept. But I am alone, and I cannot do something alone. I am only one." Then Zuhair, this 
time he said, "No, you are not alone. I will be with you." So Zuhair he said, "Okay, so we are two. Better to find a third one." So both of them they went to Al Mutaim and Abi, another one. And then they told him the same thing. How come our relatives, our people, they are there? We are sitting here. We are relaxing. We are eating. We are drinking, and they are like this. How come we accept this? So he said, "No, I don't agree. But we are only three. So let us try to find another one." So they went also to another one, and they start to talk to him. Also the same, the same thing. Then he said, "Okay, let us find a fifth one." And finally, they went to the fifth one. His name was Sama Abdul Aswad. They went to the fifth one, and then all of them, five of them, they decided it was. They sit at night and they start to discuss, and then they decide that next day morning, we will go to the Kaaba, and we will take out this uh, agreement and tear it. This was the first part. In another hand, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, Jibril came to, came to him and he told him that this agreement was eaten by one insect except the name of Allah because they used to write Bismillahum, means in the name of you God. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he told Abu Talib, he told his uncle, he told him that this would happen to the agreement. See, see here there is a point we need to understand it. Originally, remember we said that they make this agreement and they put it inside the Kaaba. Why? To let it become as a religious issue. So no one will be able to discuss this issue. That if you discuss this issue, then you are against God, and God will punish you, will do this and that to you. And al Mushrikeen, they agree and they accept. See, today we have the same the same issue. And today there are a lot of people, you know, you go to the temples and here and there, you find that they are burning the incense, you find that they are paying or burning these paper money and doing all of those things. And then if you ask them to stop this, then they will say, No, we will not stop it. God, you know, the God will will punish us, will do something bad to us. But who made this? And who told you that this is God? And another another part you find that you know they have you know every like every not year, I mean maybe every each festival or celebration or occasion that they still have to to burn incense for the dead bodies and so on. Even I think that each house must have those the names of the dead bodies and they have to burn incense for them from time to time. And they say if we don't do this then God will be angry, they will be angry, whatever, we will be hurt, and so on. So, it was the same, and it is today the same, and it will remain the same as long as we are not using our brain. Remember, we said 
when Hamza, when he became Muslim, Rabbi Allah, when Hamza became Muslim, how he became Muslim? He said a word. He didn't want to say it. He said it because he was angry. But then, when he started to think, then he found that, yeah, this is okay. This is this is true. This is the correct thing. Omar ibn Khattab, how he became Muslim. Omar ibn Khattab, he didn't hear Quran before. For sure he did. He heard something about Quran before, but when his heart became soft, when you know when, when he saw his his sister crying and bleeding, then his heart, you know, he could hear with great. And his heart became softer. So then he asked for this paper, he asked for this Quran to read, but with with a soft heart and with a clear mind to check. What is this? When he accepts to check what is this, because he wants to know the truth, then what happened? Then he accepted. While at the same time, remember we said, at the same time, Al Akhnas, Al Abu Sufyan, Al Abu Jahl, every night they used to go hiding to be next to the house of the Prophet Muhammad to hear him how he is reading Quran because they like to hear it. But still, still, they were hearing Quran, but without heart. Only listening to Quran using your ear is not enough. When you are hearing Quran, you need to use all of your organs, including your heart, to understand Quran. You know, there is a story. They say that once there was one student and his, his teacher, the Imam, he heard that this student, every day, every night, he spent the whole night praying and reciting Quran. And the whole night he can finish like, uh, like 100 pages. So then the Imam, he, he asked him, is this true? I, I heard this, is this true? Then that student, he said, yes. Then the Imam, he said, tonight, when you are reciting, when you are praying, when you are reciting Quran, you consider yourself reciting Quran and I am listening to you and I will check how is your recitation. So next day, next day, the Imam asked him, so how was it last night? So that student, he said, um, so, so, but I could only finish 50 pages. Then the Imam he said, okay, so tonight when you are reciting Quran, you think while you are reciting Quran that the Prophet Muhammad is listening to you when you are reciting Quran. So he said, okay, next day the Imam he saw and he asked him, so how was it? So that student he said, it was difficult actually, I could only finish. 20 pages. Then the Imam told him, okay, so this time you recite Quran and you put in mind that Allah Ta'ala is listening to you when you are reciting Quran. So next day that student he came and he was kind of disappointed. He said, I could only finish one page. It is 
only a story, but what do we learn from this story? We learn that when you are reciting Quran in a way that you know that those are Quran is the words of who? Quran is the words of Allah Taala. So when I am reading Quran. Do I think that those are the words of Allah Taala? Wa Taala. This is one. And second, do I think that Allah Taala wa Taala is listening to me when I am reciting this Quran? Well, in that, 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 in and you are so, you know, attracted to this writer. And you really used to read all of his books and 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 and. and. and even you still remember, you know, the the main sentence that this writer says. Then imagine. By coincidence, you could meet this writer face to face, personally. Then, will you tell him that, you know, I like all of your books, especially that book that I forgot what you used to say in that book. You used to say something good, but I forgot what is it. Would you say this to him? But I really like all what you write. It is really very touching and very nice. And then, for example, he asked you, so what is the most nice sentence you, you like that I wrote? Then you say, uh, one sentence you were writing something, I forgot what is exactly, but it is about, about life, maybe. But, but I really am really so interested in what you write. So does it mean that you really care? Does it mean that you really respect this person? Well, in Latin method with Allah. But today, most of us we have this problem. Today, most of us, when we are reading Quran, we are just reading Quran, the words only. We don't really, we don't really think. We don't affiliate the Quran. We don't really think deeply what Allah Taala is telling us. While the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu when he used to hear, when once he was walking, then Hal Ataka Hadith Al Ghasiyah, did you hear? The story, or or the talk, or the speech about Al Ghazia, about the Day of Judgment, or about Hell. Then the Prophet Muhammad he said, "Atani ya Allah, yes, I heard about it." So Quran is revealed. When I read Quran, I should read Quran in a way that it was revealed for me to read it, not only to the Prophet Muhammad and it is his business. It is not only his business; it is my business also. For example, Allah Taala Taala says, "Sabbi isma Rabbika Laala." We read it maybe sometimes every day. "Sabbi isma Rabbika Laala," "Aladhi Qalaqa Tasawwa," "Aladhi Qadda Rabbika." "Sabbi isma Rabbika Laala." So means say Subhanallah. Now we said before. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He said, Sabbaha lillah. This is in the past. And then, Yusabbihu lillah. This is present. But all of those are not about human beings. They are about animals, they are about trees, about everything. Then, you, human being, Sabbih is marabbika la'ala. You know, everyone, everybody is saying, Subhanallah. You also should say, Subhanallah. When I read Sabbih Isma Rabbika Al-A'la, do I feel that this is an order to me? In everything, in everything, each ayah in Quran, it has, it has a message for me as a Muslim to follow. 
But how are we reading Quran? This is the point. Are we reading Quran in the way that we should read it? Are we reading Quran the same way that the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they used to read the Quran? You know, those those companions with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi when they were in the siege. So, were they alone? They were not alone. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala was with them, but why? Because they were good believers. Why Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala brought the victory to the Muslims in Badr, in Ghazwa al Badr? Is it because they were strong and they were big and there were so many so they deserve to win? They were 300 people. And the disbelievers, they were almost 1,950. The disbelievers, they had with them, they had 100 horse. And the Muslims, how many horses they had? The disbelievers they had with them seven hundred camels. And the Muslims they had seventy. And then at the end, who win? Muslims. Why? Is it because they were good fighters? But because they had the belief. That they deserve, because of this belief, to become winners. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, Inna Allah yudafi'u an in ladina amin. This is chapter 22. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He defends those who believe. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, Wa kana haqqan alayna. Nasrul Mu'minin. It is a must on us to bring victory to who? To believers. So then what is the key point? The key point is to be believers. When we are real believers, we will not be defeated. When we are real believers, we will own everything. This is what Allah said. Allah promised those who believe and do good deeds that they will get the authority on earth and here in the land. Islam is not only leading you to paradise in the hereafter. Islam is also leading you to the paradise here. But it needs the real belief. Now, when the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he told Abu Talib about this, so Abu Talib, he asked the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he asked him, are you sure? So the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, yes, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, he told me this and I'm sure about it. So then Abu Talib, he went out and he went to the Kaaba and he told the disbelievers, he told them that Muhammad says that the insect ate all of your agreement. So you open it and you check. If you find that this is correct, this would happen, this means that your agreement is fake, is false, it's not really for, it's not really a religious agreement. Otherwise, if you find that it is still as it is, then you have the right to do so and so. So 
So of course Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab and all of those people, they were so happy that, oh, okay, for sure, the insect was not eaten. So this means that now we have the right to kill Muhammad. And Abu Talib he get in, he took it out, then he found that all of it was eaten by the insect, except what small piece it was written on it. Bismillah is in the name of God. But did the disbeliever agree? Did they accept? Still no. What did they say? They said this is another magic from Muhammad. See, here there is one point I want to catch it also to, to say something. Maybe it is important to know it. When you are telling the truth, and when you know that this is the reality, when more and more people, they disbelieve in you, don't be angry. This is a healthy situation. When you are the only Muslim in the family, and all of your family, they are not Muslims, and then you keep on telling them, you know that this is the reality, you know that this is Quran, you know that this is from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, you know that this is the real religion, you know that this is the only accepted religion by Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And then you keep on talking and talking and telling your, your, your parents or your family about this. When they insist to find excuses not to listen to you, then don't be angry. This means that you are telling the truth. And here is the biggest proof. The Prophet Muhammad he is in front of them, talking to them, showing them the miracles, and they still insist, no, this is not miracle, this is magic. This is coincidence. This is what, this is what about it. You know, when the Prophet Muhammad was with them, and then he said, you know, he was discussing with them, then they said, if then he double check with them. If this happened, will you become Muslim? They said yes. And then the Prophet Muhammad he made the dua, he asked Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to let this happen. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala he said, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala he made it happen. And all of them, they saw the moon cut into two. What did they say? Did they say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah? They said, they said magic. See, so, now here, now we are, maybe, maybe now we feel angry. If Abu Jahad is in front of us, now we will kill him. Imagine the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dealing with those people. Imagine the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he was suffering from this kind of brain. But still didn't give up. And still keep on talking about Islam. And still keep on trying and trying until finally the Prophet Muhammad was was you know the Prophet Muhammad when did he when when did he immigrate to Medina? The Prophet Muhammad he spent with them all of these years, over ten years, 
He is with them and keep on trying and trying with them. And even when he came back, later we will we will we will read to that one. When he came back at the end to Mecca, did he came back to kill them? He came back again to try again with them. Abu Sufyan, he was, he was hypocrite that time. He was not yet really a good Muslim. He was hypocrite that he just said, he just said the Shahada because he saw that Muhammad became so big. And still, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he said, وَمَنْ دَخَلَ دَارَ أَبُوْ سُفْيَانَ فَهُوَا Still he said, the one who is in Haram is safe. The one who is in his house is safe. And the one who, who goes to the house of Abu Sufyan is safe. And then his house, and then the house of Abu So see, the Prophet Muhammad was using, you know, he was, you know, he he was dealing with everyone with wisdom. So, we go back to what happened when they said that when Abu Talib, we show it to them, when they said that, no, this is another magic from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, at that time, Abu Talib, he started to make dua and asking Allah to help them. Asking Allah, asking his God, but he was asking to help them that see the truth. It is very clear, but they still insist to attack them. Yeah, in, in Arabic it is the same. He was, he, you know, in Arabic it is the same. He was, he was saying Allahumma, so it is God. But then when this happened, remember we said the five people at night that they were arranging that next day they would stand up and say that they disagree. So then the first one to stand up was also Isham ibn Abad. He stand up and then he said that you shouldn't do this and here it is clear and you have to uh, to uh, to release uh, to release them from this sea. Then Abu Jahl, he insists not to let, not to release them. Then the second one, the Zuhair of Umayyah, he stand up, he said, you have to, and, and we didn't agree what you said in this agreement from the beginning. So Abu Jahl, he said, you are lying. Then those two, they said that, no, you are lying. And then the third one stand up. And the fourth one and the fifth one, all of them, then they stand up. And they have their, their sword and so on. And each one of them also, they have their own tribe and family. So then it became big. And it would become almost a war. So Abu Jahl, he just accept and release, you know, let them release. All the five, they went to the siege, and then they opened it, and with their people also, and let the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and all the people, they let them go back, go out, go back home, and just to be with them. Now, just for your information, depends on what you are reading, that there are different different books.
stories of Sirah. Sirah means the story of the Prophet Muhammad So, some books they say that the one who went inside Kaaba to check this this book was Hamza, not Abu Talib. And anyway, those small details, they are not very important. Either Hamza or Abu Talib, the important thing is that they were released. And all the books, they say the same time. I mean, the time is the same, the story is the same, but only in those minor things, from story to another, it has minor difference and they are not really important. Now, after this, they went back and some, uh, some they kept on going to Habasha and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did he give up? Did he say that I don't want them to make more troubles to me? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu from the first day after this happened, he went out and he started to find new people to talk to them about Islam. And more and more people they became Muslims. And still the disbelievers, they whenever they see anyone who is going to talk to the Prophet Muhammad, they try to stop him. And many of them, they stopped listening to Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab because they knew how bad are they. They knew what they did. So at the end, at the end, after all of this suffering, at the end, the, the truth became clear. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala he, he told us in Quran, He tells us in Quran, and it is so clear. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوَىٰ وَنَقْسَمْ مِنَ الْتَمَرَاتِ وَالْأَمْوَىٰ وَنَقْسَمْ مِنَ الْأَمْوَىٰ وَنَقْسَمْ مِنَ الْأَمْوَىٰ وَالْأَمْوَىٰ وَالْتَمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِ Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He said, We will, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ You will have this trial, this, this test, this exam. But then Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala said, بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ See, what is the meaning of بِشَيْءٍ? A little. So it is very simple thing. So it is not really something big. It is not really something as what you think that, oh, I'm suffering. I am the most miserable person in the world. I am suffering. No, any other one is suffering. What are the things that you may suffer? We say in al khawf first. Khawf is fear or yeah, fear. Then the second thing, jua. Jua is hunger. So so what? So what if you feel scared a little for the sake of Allah. Where is the problem? So what if you feel hungry for the sake of Allah? Where is the problem? So see, the first one, a little. A little, a little scared and a little hunger. Then what is after this? What is the meaning of naqs? It means you have, but some of it was gone. This is naqs. So it is not all. 
it is not only a little. From what? Amwal, money. Then Amphos, people. Then Samarat. Samarat is the vegetables, whatever, all what, what we can get. See, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He is telling us that do not make it big. It is not big. It is, it is only a little supper. It is only that for some or few days or few months or maybe even few years of your life, you are suffering. Still some, why? Because we, you still have the rest of your life. And who is saying this? Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So he knows what is he saying. And then, although they are very little, although they are few, but still Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, after, after those few and little suffering, He still consider you patient. So he said, Tell those patient people a good news. See, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He didn't say that you are only suffering a little, so this is not accounted. You are only suffering a little, so this is not accumulated. You are only suffering a little, so no need to talk about it. No, He still considering that you are patient. Now, what is the good news for those patient people? First, الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَجِعُونَ This is the first thing. Those patient, how can I know that this person is patient? Check Quran, you will know if this person is patient or not. How? الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ Whenever they have a problem, what they do? Whenever they have a problem, what they do? Do they go to the therapist? No. Do they go for a vacation to to uh, Paris or to Vancouver or whatever? No. What they do? They said, anyway, we are from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. All what we have is from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. All what is in hand is from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. At the end, all of us will go back to him, including us. So now you know how to become patient. You know how to tell people that you are patient. It is not by telling them, look, I have this problem and this problem and this problem, and Alhamdulillah, I'm okay, and I'm not complaining, and I'm not saying any bad things, but actually it is terrible life. No, then you are not patient. The patient, according to what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, are those who know that whatever happened to them, it is from Allah, and whatever was taken from them, originally it is from Allah. So then, why to be angry? So in that So what will happen? Now we go to the good news. This is me. Those people, those patients, alayhim, upon them, salawat. Salawat is the plural of 
salah and when from Allah. So does it mean that Allah is praying to them? No. The salah from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is supporting, is mercy, is satisfaction. So only this, no, warahmah. And mercy also. And only this, no, and those are the successful people. So, is it a good news or not? It is a good news. And the payment is big. The payment to get all of those things. The, the thing that you have to do to get this payment, is it a big thing? It is only to accept what Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala wants it to happen to you. Of course, this is when it is out of your hands. You know, today one of our big problems, you know what is it? I am driving my car. So the car stopped. Something wrong happened with the engine. Today our problem is that when this happened to me, I go out of the car, then I raise my hand. Oh Allah, you revenge from this car. Oh Allah, make this car work better. Oh Allah, don't let me stay here the whole night. This is what we are doing today. Instead of this, you open the cover and start to check if you know how to solve the problem. And while you are checking, you say, Oh Allah, help me. Then I will get the help. Today our problem, unfortunately, most of us is that we are depending on Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala without doing the things that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is ordering us to do. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was able, when Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala sent Jibreel to him the first time, and he told him, Ikhra, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was able to say, Oh Allah, make them all Muslims, and I will be at home, and you make them Muslims. Did he do so? He didn't. Why? For us to learn. You know, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He said, in chapter 31, we said this before, when Luqman, alayhi salam, he was talking to his son, teaching him, this is in Quran, what did he tell him? What did he tell him? He told him, Ya Bunayya, aqimi salah, wa'amur bil ma'ruf, wanha anil munkar, then, then, wasfir ala ma aqaba, inna dhalika min azmin umur. Ya Bunay, my son, Luqman is talking to his son. Aqim is salah, said the prayer. Pray. Then, then, what more will Maru enjoy the good deeds? Then, what are the Munkah forbid bad deeds? Then, what's the Alama of Sama? Then be patient for what will happen to you. So, what does this mean? This means that when you pray and when you enjoy good deeds and when you forbid bad deeds, so you will be successful and then you will be rich and then people will respect you and then you will be nice and then and then. No, it means that then you will suffer. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, before he became a messenger, when when Khadija radiallahu anha she took him to, to Waraka ibn Nawfal, when the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was telling Waraka ibn Nawfal what happened to him, what did Waraka told him, what did he tell him? He told him, those are the signs.
times that you are the messenger. 我们之前有讲到，当先知路德在那个山洞里面发生那个事情之后，他回来找他的太太。那肯尼加就带他去他的一个表兄那边，然后他就是了解比较了解宗教的，他就跟他讲说呢，根据你所讲的这些事情呢，你是具备了这个先知的这个条件。Then what did Waraha say? He said, if I am still alive. That time when they kick you out, I would support you. That Wala Ka, 就是他这个这个宗教人士，他就跟他说，如果呢，当就是人家开始就是把你赶出去的时候，那时候我还活着的话呢，那我会我会帮助你，会收留你。Then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was surprised. 那先知穆德听了就很惊讶。You know the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Sadiqul Amin. They used to call him the honest person who always tell the truth. And they all respect him. They all like him. So the Prophet Muhammad was surprised. He said, "I want to go to Syria. They will kick me out." He said, "They will kick me out." Why to kick me out? Why to kick me out? You think about it. Why to kick me out? Why to kick me out? If I am a Sadiq al Amin, I am the one who is telling the truth. I am the one that they like me. I am the one that they respect me. Why would they kick me out? I am the one that they like me. I am the one that they respect me. Why would they kick me out? Then what did Walaka tell him? He told him, anyone who comes to anyone with the same thing you are going to come with, they will attack you. It means, it means, anyone who stand up to tell the truth in front of the wrong thing, for sure he will be attacked. 任何一个人呢，站在这个错误的事情的这个前面呢，然后把道、把真理、把事实讲出来的话，那一定会受到别人的攻击。This is the healthy situation. 这是一个很正常的情况。This is the easiest way for you to know if you are doing the right thing or the wrong thing. 这个就是我们可以用此来判断我自己在做的是好、正确的事情还是错误的事情。When you find that whenever you say anything, no matter what is it, people they clap their hands for you, then you have to think twice. That if you say, no matter what you say, people will always clap their hands for you. Then you have to think twice. That if you say, no matter what you say, people will always clap their hands for you. Then you have to think twice. That if you say, no matter what you say, people will always clap their hands for you. Then you have to think twice. That if you say, no matter what you say, people will always clap their hands for you. Then you have to think twice. That if you say, no matter what you say, people will always clap their hands for you. Then you have to think twice. That if you say, no matter what you say, people will always clap their In general, when you find that your life in spreading Islam is going smooth, then you have to think maybe you have something wrong in the way you are spreading Islam. 如果说呢，你在传播伊斯兰的这个过程当中，一切都非常，一切都非常的呃平顺，非常的顺利的话，你可能要去重新的思考、反思，说我可能有什么样的一个错误。And the proof. Is what happened to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the witness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the Pass away. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will will get more suffering from disbelievers. That Prophet Muhammad will suffer from the 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 disbelievers.